Sirius, what was your moment of purest, deepest terror? When I was a teenager I used to have trouble sleeping. One time I went downstairs to get a drink or something, and I saw a tall guy in a hoodie leaning against our back door and looking inside, it was all glass. I just kind of froze up, didn't really know what to do, this was that that you had as an irrational fear. We stared at each other for like two seconds then I noticed he was reaching for the door handle. Well, a good old reliable brother of mine forgot to lock it, so it slid right open. When he could fit through the door he put his hand in his hoodie pocket and came sprinting at me. All of that happened in about four to five seconds. Thank God he accidentally kicked a wooden chair that was at the family table and fell down. My dog sure heard that and came flying down the stairs like a bat out of hell. We called the police, turns out he was stalking the neighbor behind it for quite a while, but stopped after robbing a house there, and moved on to ours. Creepy. We got an alarm system after that. Falling out of a moving vehicle into the middle of an intersection. The back of my head slammed into the pavement, and instantly everything from the neck down went numb. I tried to move my legs but couldn't, same with my arms. I saw my left arm fly across my face as I hit it but didn't know if it was on top of me, under me, or snapped in half. Worst of all, all I could do was stare as a car came toward me lying in the middle of the road, didn't hit me, but dear God was that terrifying. In the span of about three seconds, I went from completely okay, to thinking I was paralyzed, to thinking I was going to die. I was 15 and in Florence waiting in line to see Michelangelo's David. I had to use the bathroom, so I walked over to a bar bought a soft drink and then asked where the bathroom was. I was handed a key and went down a spiral staircase. At the bottom there were two light switches. Turned them walked through the first door and locked it. That's where the sink was. Walked through the next door and locked it. That's where the toilet was. I was buttoning my jeans when the light turned off and I heard some loud banging and a door slamming opening. Then the bang was on the second door. I started screaming. The door flew open, and someone grabbed me. I'm still screaming. Then the lights turned on and I'm thrown into the wall while two men fought. One took off. One took me upstairs and got me water. I couldn't stop shaking. This is a rough one for me. Mine was looking into my father's eyes as he had me pinned against the door, right before he started punching me. His face was completely devoid of emotion, but I saw uncontrolled rage in his eyes. He punched me in the face for what seemed like an eternity, probably only hit me five to six times. At one point I tried to turtle up, so he kicked me in the side of my head and hauled me back up to punch me some more. He had me pinned against the door to the garage and in between punches he was slamming me into the door which split the door frame apart, he blamed me and made me fix it. The door to the garage was at the top of a flight of stairs, after he was done punching me, he threw me down the stairs and told me he better not see me again. I crawled into my room and bled on the carpet for a while because, hate you and your carpet. My stepmom came home a while later and by the time she brought me dinner, both my eyes were swollen shut. She told me I deserved it, but I needed to go to the hospital. He had broken my nose so much so that the cartilage had separated, and the bridge was cracked. They rebuilt my nose and sent me home. Not sure what my stepmom told them had happened. I was confined to my room for six months after that. I was ten. I watched a friend take a fat shot of heroin after having drank almost an entire fifth. He stumbled around for a bit and then sat on him and slumped forward. I knew what was going on and I was calm, I grabbed my phone and tried to sit him up. He fell backwards and made some wheezing groans, his lips were the first thing to turn blue. I was really scared, but I felt like this would happen eventually, so I was kind of prepared. I was on the phone with the ambulance and ran downstairs and propped all the doors open. I ran back up to my friend, who at this point was bluish and purple in the face as well as lips. 
His heart was an irregular rhythm at first, and then it stopped. His eyes twinkled a tiny bit when I lifted his lids, I held his face, and was for whatever reason aware of the thick stubble that lined his cold jaw. I was holding him while he died and the only thing I could think was, this isn't him fighting. There is no internal conscious struggle he has to overcome, has just a pile of meat going through all of its failsafes and losing. I ran downstairs and guided the ambulance to my apartment. When they showed up one of the EMT said, oh looks like we got one, which I assumed meant dead. But he lived. They brought him back and he had minor brain damage. According to the doctors if I had waited a minute longer to call, he probably would not have made it, or would have been pretty damaged mentally. He thanks me for being there for him, and I still am racked with nightmares. Know why? He was scared that shooting up while drunk would be a bad idea, and I told him he'd be fine. A loaded handgun with a silencer on it pressed to my head, held by a man dressed in black with ski mask, in my home late at night. All I could think about at that time was being so glad my wife wasn't home to be involved in this and horrified that my friends were. I was quite sure my three friends and I were about to be murdered. Turns out they didn't shoot me in the head, only the leg, then beat me with a hammer. They did go and find my dog and shoot him six times in the head though, .22 shorts through a silencer. He lived, after two weeks on life support, thank God. Living through the following year was what deep terror nightmares are made of. <laughs> Scariest stuff ever, while I was back in college I had the opportunity to fly out to Kansas City to see a friend for a weekend. We hadn't seen each other in a while, and I really needed a break, so I accepted the invitation. I arrived at around 9 p.m. I knew nothing about the city, and he didn't have a car or cell phone because of how close his apartment was to campus. He walked to pick me up from the bus station where I got off from the airport. We went back to his apartment. We started the night off talking and drinking. It was a blast. The time went on and it quickly became 3 a.m. We noticed the time just as there came a loud knock on the door. Did someone just knock on the door with a piece of metal? I asked my friend. I think so but let me go Che. Suddenly and roaring loud we hear from the door a man calling in a deep and guttural voice C-A-N-D-Y. Free candy. He continued to knock. Open the door and come out for some free candy. My friend approached the peephole quietly and peered through. He turned around with color slowly draining from his face. He mouthed me the words, we're going to die. He slithered to the floor and wormed his way back to where I was squatting behind the couch, together we made our way to the back of the apartment and hid in a closet. The knocking continued. I asked him what he had seen. He must be at least six and a half feet tall. He is black, ripped, and has a double-barreled shotgun. His reply carried the emotions of being half amazed and shocked at what he was saying. We had bricks while waiting for the door to come down in splinters. The knocking continued to get louder and louder. We could feel the pounding from the door in the floor where we were hiding. There was no phone to call for help, no car to run to out of the window. We were on the fourth floor with no access to the stairwell. There was nowhere for us to go. After about 15 or so minutes the knocking stopped. We no longer heard anyone yelling and offering free candy. We waited for another half hour or so before coming out and looking back into the hallway. He was gone. The next morning, I went out and rented a car. My friend went and bought a cell phone. We made a police report, but they never followed up on it. The day following my mother's death. The realization that this time of my life was over, the time when I could go back to live with my mom if things turned to serious stuff, it was gone, that and so many other things. No more calls, no more I love you, etc. I was 19 years old when it happened, and it definitely was the most terrifying moment of my life. No contact with my father since I was 12. But of all things, the part that hurt the most out of it? No more phone calls. 
To realize that no matter what, no matter how long you wait or how many times the phone rings, it'll never be her voice again. Asking me how I'm doing, if I have enough food, telling me that she loves me. Not the paranormal or violent type of terror, but utterly soul-crushing and pure terror for me. I'm a steady person. The more tense a situation is, the calmer and more centered I am. However, in the moments leading up to that tension, the adrenaline and the expectation can be almost overwhelming. The very day that I graduated from the last step in the Naval Nuclear Power Training Pipeline, I was assigned to stand reactor operator watch by myself. I had sat at that panel a dozen times before, but always with someone at my side. I knew my job, and I knew it well, but now I had to do it alone. But that's all right. It was just a normal training day. There was no need for concern. Nothing untoward was going to happen. And then. Someone came and sat beside me. He was one of the staff instructors. An announcement was made over the 2MC, engineering-wide PA system, that all staff instructors were to take the watch from their students for a period of staff training, advanced drills. In other words, they were going to throw some heavy drills slash testing slash simulated accidents at the instructors while the students watched. Only, the guy sitting beside me wasn't a reactor operator instructor. He was an electrical operator and a member of the drill team. He couldn't take over for me. That's when I realized, he wasn't there to take over for me. He was there to evaluate me on the drill. I had to do an instructor level drill. So, I think to myself, there's no way they're going to have this be a drill that has anything to do with the reactor operator. Not on my first day qualified to even sit in that chair alone. And then he reached out and placed a small, fake instrument indicator over one of my regular instrument indicators. It was just a small, see-through plastic gauge with a fake indicator needle. You could still see the proper reading behind it. And he set the needle at a particular level to simulate something for the drill, and I knew. This was absolutely going to involve me. I was chewing the inside of my cheek, my hands were clammy, my heart was racing, and my eyes were rapidly flying over the indicators looking for the slightest thing out of whack. All of my senses were tuned to the panel in front of me and the sounds of the world around me. And then an alarm went off, there were flashing lights, and suddenly, everything was in slow motion. The shakes were gone, and I was calm, quick, and sure in every action I took, announcing them as I took them. My flurry of motion as I turned switches and changed settings lasted maybe five seconds, and then I sat down and started logging the event. The guy next to me, observing me? It was his turn to have a heart attack as he watched me move much more quickly than he had anticipated. If I had done something wrong, he'd have never been able to stop me in time. But I didn't do anything wrong. I'd nailed it. He leaned over and whispered, that was perfect. And if you ever move that fast on the RPCP, reactor plant control panel, in a drill again, I'll break your arm. My first panic attack. My heart was pounding, my body wouldn't stop shaking and twitching, I couldn't get enough air into my lungs. I really thought I was going to die, probably by my own hand to make it all stop. It's understandable to be scared when you see a wild animal close to you, if you have a gun to your head, or you know you just messed up and are going to receive a serious injury, but it's even worse when one moment you're perfectly fine, the next your body is practically attacking itself and putting dark horrible thoughts in your head. You know you'll be fine, maybe you've had them before, but there is no logic with panic attacks or anxiety. You can only hope and pray that you'll make it out alive. I woke up one day in high school, years ago. I was pretty much a bum, and it really took me a lot to pull myself out of the sheets, so I would always try and do things to prolong the actual waking up, i.e., shower with the lights off. So, this one day I'm showering with the lights off. I finish and open the shower door to turn the light on, I flick it and they don't come on. I think, oh, power's out as this happened often where I lived. So, 
I open the bathroom door to let some sunlight into the room, no light. At this point I started really panicking. I throw open all the doors I can, stumbling round in the darkness without being able to see anything. I scream for my mother, who I thought still might be home, but she had gone to work. So, I'm in hysterics crawling up the stairs on all fours because I am completely blind. I finally got to the telephone to dial 911, I got through 9-1- and slowly my vision started expanding. A sliver at first and then eventually I was able to see everything again. Seriously, so terrifying. I have been mugged, used as a drug mule, and been in a minor plane crash, but nothing more terrifying than waking up blind. When I had my first bout of sleep paralysis. For those who don't know what it is, here is a Wikipedia article on it, sleep paralysis. So, this happened back when I was in medical school, and I was extremely sleep-deprived. I laid down and what felt like minutes later, but was actually hours, I woke up, well at least my mind did, but my body didn't. I slept on my side, and I was able to open up my eyes. I remember staring down my left arm that I was laying my head on. I kept thinking, why can't I move my arm, I soon started to panic. I remember hearing the TV which was on Adult Swim at the time and hearing Family Guy in the background. The minute that I started to panic the distinct sound of Family Guy started to get distorted and it turned to loud static. I remember trying to scream at this point, but I couldn't. I knew for sure that I was awake and that what I was seeing was my actual arm. I've had lucid dreams before where I knew I wasn't really awake, but this was different. Then the real terror came. You know how if you're lying on a bed and someone else gets on the bed, you can feel it indirectly? Like they're not touching you, but you feel the effect of them getting on the bed. Well, that's what I felt down at the bottom of my bed. It felt like something big just got on my bed. To make it worse it felt like it was walking up the bed closer to me. It never actually touched me, but I could feel the indents of it on the bed near my feet, torso, and then my head. By the end of it I just had this feeling that something big and evil was hovering right above my face, and I swear I could feel it breathing in me. At this point I'm having a full-on panic attack and all I can focus on is moving my arm. Every fiber or me was telling it to move, until finally it twitched. When it twitched I slowly started regaining control of it and the TV, in an instant, went from static back to family guy. When I realized that my eyes really were open throughout this whole experience I really started to get scared. I went downstairs and started doing research and that is when I came across sleep paralysis. This made me feel a little better, knowing that it was a common phenomenon. The one thing that still baffles me to this day though, is the fact that so many people experience an evil presence type phenomenon. I mean so much so that if you google, sleep paralysis, one of the suggestions that comes up is, sleep paralysis demon, I mean I think they even named the thing. I get that it's your brain playing tricks on you when your body still thinks you're asleep, but why is it almost always something evil? I rarely have bad dreams, but in the few times that sleep paralysis has happened to me, I always feel that evil presence, just like many others. Why can't it be a positive experience with a hot Jessica Alba climbing on my bed instead? Hate it. This used to happen to me a couple of times a year, over a period of about 10 years. Full on what you described, along with the sleep paralysis demon, but this one used to sit on my chest, at least it felt that way. Fought it every time, at least in my head because I couldn't move anything except my eyes. Terrifying. Then one day, they tended to happen during daytime naps, I was tired of fighting, accepted what was happening and thought, screw it, I'm going back to sleep. Haven't had another episode since. This has happened to me a few times and terrified me until I realized what was happening. The first two times I woke up and saw this dark figure standing in my room, it did not move but it was there. Well not really but. You can't move, and it feels like it is the terror that is holding you in place. 
The last time I woke up to my TV and rolled over it was as if someone burst into my room with a knife. I remember his face as he was getting closer to me, and I could not move. That was the most scared I have ever been in my life. When it stopped I got up and searched my apartment and then googled hallucinations in sleep does not dream and found sleep paralysis. I work at a dairy about 40 miles outside of town, and it began as any other day would. Well during the day I was servicing a water pump outside of a cow manure holding pit. This was in early January last year, and it was still about 24 degrees Fahrenheit outside. To get supplies, my dad leaves me to do some tinkering. My stupid teenage curiosity gets the best of me and says, Gee Matt, you could walk on that seemingly frozen cow manure and be like a sort of cow shit Jesus, so, while my dad is away I slowly creep out onto the cement blocks anchored to the bottom of the pit. First step, so far so good second step, crack plunge. I fell into the freezing cold but liquid cow poop and immediately I started panicking and hyperventilating. With only some rebar to hold on to my hope was fading fast as I knew I couldn't hold on until my dad got back. I was about 5 feet 10 inches at that time and tried feeling around for a bottom to the seemingly bottomless pit. I found it, and I was able to walk along the floor and throw myself across the concrete blocks. My pants almost came off and I climbed up and called my dad asking if my mother could bring me my clothes. I have heart arrhythmia and when I first noticed it and went to my doctor, he directed me to the ER immediately. I felt fine, but apparently my heart condition is usually extremely serious, so when the doctors and nurses in the emergency room first saw it on my EKG, they freaked out and started working quickly to get my heart rate under control. After trying a few injections of different things meant to slow my heart rate, the discussion came up that they might need to use a defibrillator and it was possible I wouldn't be sedated for it. They brought one into the room, and I said, no, get that thing away from me. Pure terror. Thankfully, a cardiologist had time by that point to look over my tests and determined my condition wasn't immediately life-threatening, so I was transferred to a room and eventually they found a medication that worked. <laughs> Halloween party at my friend's house during middle school. There was a cave entrance on their property, so we all usually went caving. That night we decided to play hide and seek, and I thought the cave would be a great hiding spot. Keep in mind it's pretty huge. I get down into the main chamber and when I shine my flashlight to the entrance of the next one, there are two massive green eyes looking back right at me. I bolted out of there and made it back to the surface. I look back and my friend's bull mastiff follows me out of the cave. Apparently she really likes going down there. My wife and I went on our honeymoon in Nassau. We went snorkeling out pretty far. When we reached the edge of the walled-off area we decided to go back in. We went off in the same direction. I would come up and look where I was going a few times and see her. After a while, I looked up again and couldn't find her anywhere. I swam back and forth looking. Swam to the dock in the middle and talked to the lifeguard to help me find her. I was terrified and in tears. My new wife, lost in the Bahamas, probably drowned and I had to go home without her. I made it back to shore and they finally came over the loudspeaker calling for her. She walked up like nothing was wrong. My wife is obviously a better slash faster swimmer than me. Gun pointed right at my face at the age of 16. Some kid wanted to date me. I continuously told him no. Guess he got tired of rejection and thought threatening me would change my mind? Never saw him after that but now seven years later he found me on Facebook and sent me a friend request. Um, denied bro blocked and denied. Not just one moment of deep terror, but some pretty anxiety inducing thoughts I have had occurring more frequently. I was on a bus in Spain during an abroad trip, looking at the countryside and thinking about life and the world outside of my encapsulated reality back home. Then, an overwhelming sense of reality washed over me, and I really thought about my life outside of my own and my death. For a moment, I really considered my life, 
how small it is and how insignificant it seems compared to the world. It was a crippling thought, and I teared up for a second. I haven't really been the same since and sometimes I wake up in the middle of the night with anxiety attacks thinking about death. I don't feel like this is normal, and I get kind of depressed sometimes when considering it. Having a seizure while I'm asleep. Most terrifying experience I have ever had. When I'm asleep dreaming my mind is active and then when a seizure starts I have the most lucid terrifying dreams and they're always very abstract and vivid. Often times when I'm coming out of it I can still see imagery while my eyes are opening. One time I just saw body parts all over my ceiling positioned in a pattern. My mind was still very confused and all I could feel was pure fear. I was afraid of myself. This is kind of mild compared to some of the other things on here, but here's mine. My best friend, her husband, my sister, and I had gone out and gotten pretty incredibly wasted one night, definitely not out of the ordinary for us. We got a cab back to my best friend's house and my sister and I stayed in their guest room that night, which is right across the hall from their bedroom. It was about 7.30 a.m. when I was awakened by my best friend's husband screaming my best friend's name. I could hear the terror in his voice, and I laid in bed for a split second thinking, okay, Tmary 32, this is it. She's dead and you're going to have to go in there and help her husband get everything in order. You're an adult now, go. I heard him scream, guys help, as I was getting out of bed. I walked into their room, expecting to see my best friend dead on their bed in a pool of vomit, in the style of Jane from Breaking Bad. What I saw instead was my best friend happily strolling out of their master bathroom saying, Guys, I'm okay. I was just pooping. Apparently she had fainted while she was on the toilet and went white and shaky for a minute and it scared her husband, and he thought she was dead. She woke up and ended up being fine. She got checked out and she's perfectly healthy, so it was just a weird freak situation but my god, it was terrifying for me and I can only imagine how her husband felt in that moment. A few friends and I went into an abandoned farmhouse when we were in grade school. It was the haunted house in our area way out in a field. I think I was around eight years old. We were just looking around in the house, not really causing any trouble. It was a two-story house, and we were in an upstairs room that looked out onto a roof. We heard someone come downstairs and scream in a high-pitched, freaky voice, who's playing monster in my house? Someone came running up the stairs and burst into the room and stood there screaming in some kind of mask. We were all on the floor screaming and freaking out. They ran out of the room to talk to someone with them that was downstairs. The four of us jumped out on the roof and that person chased us. We jumped off the roof, landed on our feet and ran for about a mile without stopping. I'm sure it was probably just some stoners or teenagers messing around, but I have never been so scared in my entire life. Your body betrays you when you are that scared. I remember I was numb and shaking all over and it took a ton of effort to even move or do anything but scream. I once went on the world's biggest bungee jump in South Africa because I'd done it before once and it was awesome, but I swear to God the cord started slipping around my feet. The fact that there's an emergency one didn't quite cross my mind at the time, I was just fairly convinced I might slip to my death to the valley floor below. Looking back on it, I know I will never become religious as the thought of praying to God never crossed my mind. All I could do was think of was how I hoped gravity wouldn't work as I know it would, and an, oh please, oh please, Oh please, pretty non-stop until the whole thing was over. I am incidentally now retired from bungee jumping. I was flying home from LA and while waiting in the airport I got pretty hungry and instead of buying food I got into my carry-on bag and ate all the weed treats I had planned to take home. Overall, I ended up eating a weed cake pop, a dark chocolate tangerine kiva bar, and a sucker. I got on the plane and fell asleep almost immediately. I woke up a little while later because my hands were wet, and I realized I had been drooling all over myself. I was so intense high that my anxiety was through the roof. 
We hit what felt like super rough turbulence and for whatever reason I had it in my head that I was going to die. The purest and most intense fear I've ever experienced. We were landing. And the people on either side of me looked at me with genuine concern. I was asked by a little old lady if I was having a heart attack. Don't know if ever been more embarrassed in my life. The lesson I learned that day was to actually pay attention to the warning labels on wheat food. That will mess you up. I was about six years old at a hotel in Galveston. All the adults were in another room, and I decided I wanted to go swimming. The problem with that was I must have forgotten that I couldn't swim. I headed down there and just jumped in the deep end. Instantly started flailing around trying to get a breath of air. I remember being just a couple of inches under the water and seeing two figures walking by, trying to yell, trying to splash, but nothing. They couldn't have even noticed me sinking. I can still feel the hopelessness deep in my chest when I think about it. I hate in video games when someone is injured in first person and the screen sort of fades between blacking out because it reminds me of that day. I still have no idea how I got to the edge of the pool or how I got out. I don't remember coughing or anything other than walking like a drunk back to the room. The worst memory I have in my brain. I lost my job. I have been employed since I graduated high school for more than 10 years. When it happened, I literally went into a panic attack. My mind focused on what am I going to do for a week and I was an emotional mess. I had always taken pride in being able to pay my own bills and survive, and suddenly that was taken from me. Realistically, I have 10 plus years of experience, half of which is in management and running operations of business and have experience in photography, having established a small business on the side a few years ago, this is a realization I had after my week of panic terror, but not having an average daily job and income was and still is terrifying to me. I don't feel secure anymore. That was a month ago and I've slumped into depression since it happened. We have quite a bit of money in the bank to support ourselves and my husband has insisted that I take a break from work, he's working, so I haven't taken any active steps in getting another job yet, although, I don't think this has helped me with my depression either. If I can get past my depression, drowning in my own self-pity, I hope to decide what path to take and pick myself back up from this. I was in my bed one night, around 11.30 p.m., watching videos on YouTube, when I heard my dad shouting my mom's name. I paused the video to see if I could hear anything else, but he just kept shouting. Now, at this point I was thinking to myself that he had done something to his iPad, he and my mom had gone the day before to get new iPads, so I thought for some reason he had dropped it. It gets to the point where I hear my mom shouting, what, back at him, so I decided to see for myself what was going on. I get down the stairs and am about to start going down the basement steps when I see my mom running up towards me. She has this terrified look on her face, so I started to get a little worried. She gets up the stairs and goes into her room, so I decide to go down into the basement to figure out what's going on. I get down there, and all I see is my dad standing with his back to the wall and my older brother sitting on the ground in front of him with his feet outstretched. My dad was leaning over him a little bit and kept saying my brother's name. My dad hadn't noticed me yet, so I walked over and said my brother's name. He was mumbling a bunch of random words, so I initially thought he was playing a prank. However, as I got closer, I noticed he had stuff that looked like foam at the corners of his mouth. I said his name a few times, and my dad looked up and told me to go upstairs. I get upstairs, and my mom is coming out of her room and is picking up the phone and starts to call 911. The person on the other end picks up, my mom explains that she thinks my brother is high on some drug, which type, she doesn't know, etc. She gives them our address, hangs up the phone, and then looks at me and tells me to stay in her room with our dogs. At this point, I'm crying because I'm scared and I'm still not 100% sure what is going on. I'm in her room for a couple minutes when I hear sirens, so I look outside, and I see a police car, but nothing else. I close the door to her room again, 
and I hear two voices downstairs asking my brother questions about where the drugs are, how much did he take, etc. Now, at this point, he'd been pretty calm I guess, considering how much of the drug he had taken. Then I hear more sirens, so I open the door again, and my mom opens the front door and letting the paramedics in and directing them to the basement. I close the door, yet again, and this is when I hear my brother start to yell. I can't remember exactly what he was saying, but some of it was like him saying he felt like he was going to die, which made my condition even worse. After a couple more minutes, he's taken to the ambulance on a stretcher, and my mom comes upstairs to make sure I'm okay. My mom went with him in the ambulance to the ER and I went with my dad to go to the hospital after they had left. Age 16 went spelunking on a school trip, just casual stuff, guides walk us into the cave, which runs over an underground river and connected with it later on. They bring us down as far as is safe without proper experience and then bring us back out again. Right near the entrance, there was a gap on the right hand side, an opening in the rock that dropped into the river only feet below. This river joined up with the cave about 200 feet further down, on the way in, we were warned repeatedly about the gap on the right, so we all stuck left and avoided it, on the way out, they assumed we would remember. I did not. I slipped on the ledge and dropped, only barely grabbing onto the edge of the rock by my fingernails, I broke two, my feet were in the water, and the current was strong and pulling me under almost immediately. My grip was poor, so I was already slipping and about to end up in the fast-flowing water below. Luckily, the guy right behind me sees this, grabs me, and hauls me out before I get sucked under. I couldn't thank him enough. If I had fallen in, it would have 200 feet of being bashed against sharp underwater rocks in total darkness, and I can't swim either. Certain death. This all took place over about 4 seconds of time, but it felt like an eternity. My mind went blank as I watched my fingers slowly slide off the rock. Sleep paralysis, before I knew what it was. This dark figure was in the corner of my room, whispering, then this really loud ringing noise drowned out all other sounds. Then the figure flew right at me and stopped an inch away from my face. The whole time I couldn't move. The figure had no eyes, just dark pits and a distorted mouth that was constantly in flux between grinning and frowning. Then it let out a shriek and slammed its face into mine. I came to in a cold sweat screaming. I was backcountry hiking in Yosemite, doing some fieldwork around midnight. I had a headlamp and was sweeping the rocks looking for salamanders in crevices, then looked up just to check out the beautiful night sky, noticed as I did so a glint maybe 40 yards away. I couldn't figure out what would be shining that late at night, glass? Distant fire? Another hiker? and continued to look at it. Then the dots became two dots as whatever was swiveled its head to look directly back at me, my heart definitely stopped beating. Fairly sure in retrospect that it was a mule deer, but the position of the eyes makes me think it could have been a big cat. Never found out. It is when my dad died. My dad was an FDNY firefighter killed on September 11th, we were incredibly lucky that they recovered him the next morning. The moment my mother found out and ran from the house screaming is something I'll never get out of my mind, or the image of my dad leaving for work now knowing that was the last time he walked out the front door, or the fact that every time I see a video of the North Tower collapsing I'm watching the death of my hero and mentor like so many others. It took a while to come to grips with it, but now I have no problem talking about it, because in my mind that's the best therapy. I'm also in the process of becoming an FDNY firefighter myself and feel that is the best way to keep his legacy alive. I was studying elephants in Tanzania. We got a little bit too close to the group 25 to 30 yards. Unfortunately, the elephants headed into some thicker cover, and they sort of disappeared from view, but next thing I know I have a six-week-old baby elephant in front of me, probably about 15 yards and her overly protected mother 10 yards behind me. The elephant charged and missed me by about 3 meters. I was shaking for a good half hour. 
The time I nearly drowned at a water park is probably the only one I can remember that I was actually terrified at. I was with my family and one of my second brother's friends, and we were in the wave pool, which was really crowded that day, so it was me, my brother, his friend, and a bunch of people we didn't know in this big cluster holding on when the wave started. Now, fun facts. 1. I'm short, currently 5 feet 1 inch, and this was when I was about in elementary school, and I always have been, and 2. I am a bad swimmer. I'm weak in the arms when it comes to swimming, because I was too scared to learn when we all started learning, so I generally had to be watched over when I was past where my feet could touch the floor. So, when the wave started, we were pretty far from where my feet could touch, and that was about the time that I slipped off the tube raft and into the water. There was no space for me to successfully get a hold of the tube to lift myself, so I was underwater for a while before someone grabbed hold of my flailing hand and pulled me up. There was a lifeguard nearby that asked me if I was alright. I was alright, but that was another reason I liked the lazy river part that they had more than the wave pool. Finding the empty bottles of medication and one of my best friends passed out in her room. Her parents were at work, and I had stopped by for a surprise visit, because those were more frequent when cell phones weren't as common, and all I remember feeling was my stomach drop when I saw all the empty bottles before rushing to shake her. After no response, I found the house phone and called 911. I remember holding her and crying, chanting in my head, we're only 13, this can't be happening, while waiting for the ambulance. She didn't make it. Every now and then I still wake up with nightmares. This happened when I was 16 or 17 years. I was down with a fever and was generally a little sick. I had not eaten anything except a few slices of bread that day because everything tasted bad. It was the middle of the night and wanted to take a leak. So, I got up and walked to the restroom. My mom and dad's room are adjacent to the restroom, while my own room was next to theirs. Oh I start peeing and realize that I am slowly blacking out. I can no longer control my legs and am starting to lose consciousness and fall. Luckily, I managed to unlock the restroom door and let out a weak scream before I blacked out and fell. I hit my head on the floor and was unconscious for a couple of seconds and then started regaining consciousness again. My dad had woken up and was carrying me out of the restroom. I opened my eyes and all I could see was black. It was the most terrifying moment in my life. I started panicking and shouting while my dad asked me to calm myself down and gave me a teaspoonful of sugar. My sight slowly started returning as soon as I had it. Apparently not eating all day was a really bad idea and my body had just become too weak, leading to low blood sugar levels, which can cause temporary blindness. I will never forget the feeling of not being able to see with my eyes open. Sometimes we take our senses for granted, but only when you realize how hard life would be without even one of them, you understand the true struggles faced by the handicapped. I plan to donate my eyes when I die. Apparently they are very easily harvested, and you could give someone the gift of sight. I would urge everyone to consider this option. Finding my mom about to die on her bedroom floor. I didn't know it at the time, but her stomach was filling with blood after a botched kidney surgery. As I held her hand while we waited for the ambulance, I can still remember looking at the reflection of us in my parents' full-length mirror and thinking, this image will be the last moment we'll ever have together. She survived, thank God, and is doing fine today, but the doctor said that if I hadn't walked in and found her when I did, she would have been dead. That was 11 years ago, and I still get a little sick thinking about the what-ifs. Was in the passenger seat of a friend's car. We were driving 65 to 70 miles per hour in the rain on the freeway, when suddenly, without warning, the car spun out. I looked over at the driver, the helpless look of terror that I saw on his face is pretty burned into my memory. Somehow, it happened to be on a straight section of the road. After what seemed like forever, the car came to a stop with a thud at the center divider, but by then it was only going about 5 miles per hour, airbag didn't even deploy. 
Nobody was hurt, and my friend was able to drive off the freeway. I can't remember anything other than, well, passing through my mind. Getting attacked by a client. I work with people with serious and chronic mental illness who are rehabilitating from being incarcerated for serious crimes. This guy had just arrived at our secure facility from the state hospital but wanted to go back, many of them do, and he knew that meant either hurting himself or somebody else. That somebody else was me. At the time, staff went outside to an enclosed yard with the 15 or so clients who smoked, and we lit their cigarettes, since they couldn't have lighters. This guy waited until I got close enough, kicked me in the leg, then the stomach. I went down and hit my head against a wall or the ground, and he kept kicking. This was out of range of the cameras, but the secretary's office window looked out into the courtyard, and she ran screaming to get other staff. Overall, I had a few nasty bruises, a concussion, and depression for like two months. My parents decided to leave town for a concert and would be gone for the whole weekend. Since they were gone, my sister and I decided that it would be fun if we invited our cousins over to have some sort of party including alcohol. Well, it all goes smoothly until the point where we don't even care about the shot glasses and just start drinking directly from the bottle. We all ended up getting really hammered and just started passing out all over the place. All I remember is that I was woken up by this gurgling noise so I got up and looked at what was making that horrible noise and it ended up being my cousin on his back choking on his own vomit and squirming around like as if he couldn't move his body. At this point I was so freaked out so I decided to roll him over but even I couldn't do that with my arms, he was a big man while I'm not so big. I decided to get on my back and just kick him until he finally rolled over and let it all out of his mouth. That gasp for air that he made when he woke up finally let me relax and just sit back catching my breath and trying to let it sink in that my cousin almost died if I hadn't woken up in time. Ever since then I haven't had a sip of alcohol without my parents' permission. I stood up from my computer desk, heard a pop on my back, and fell to the floor in excruciating pain. I hit my head on the desk and blacked out for a few minutes. When I woke up, I couldn't move my legs. The pain in my back was the worst pain I've felt, even worse than dislocating both of my knees. I was alone in the house and the nearest phone was up a set of stairs. It took me about 20 minutes to crawl my way to a phone and call an ambulance. I had no idea what was happening and was scared out of my mind that I had done some damage to my spine. The doctors in the ER told me it was an acute muscle spasm in my spine and that I would be fine. It took four days and a lot of pain meds to start walking around again. I always have a phone near me now in case of medical emergencies. Was at a beach party with a bunch of kids. It was late at night, and they dared the quiet kid at the party to swim out on the lake as far as he kid. He kind of just says no, mumbling but they finally convinced. I stood by, knowing this wasn't a clever idea but not doing anything. He made about 100, maybe 150 yards before he went under. Wait about 30 seconds, didn't come up. Counted to 10 and I was in the water. I swam as fast as I could, my friends later told me I could probably have beaten Michael Phelps. I got around the spot where he went under and dove down. It stung like hell, and I couldn't find him. Finally found him after swimming around. Brought him over my shoulder and hauled back to shore. Luckily, we had just learned CPR in health class. The ambulance was there a few minutes later. He survived, but, finding him underwater was the most terrifying sight. On my daughter's second day of kindergarten, I go to pick her up and she never comes out. I go into the school and look for her in the bathrooms. No daughter. I found a supervisor and told her my daughter was missing. They do a sweep of the school, she's not there. It only took me a brief time to have a mental breakdown and start freaking out on the school staff. A father of another girl in my daughter's class sees me in distress and starts hunting on the buses. He pulls his truck around, blocks them in, and finds her. 
but the bus driver won't let him take her off the bus. So, he had to come hunt me down so I could go grab her. Our kids are good friends now and he's mine too. There is no greater fear than thinking somebody has abducted your child. Nightmares I'm a bit claustrophobic and also walk, talk, and scream in my sleep. On one night I dreamed about being locked up. But the difference this time was that I was in a state between sleep and awake but still dreaming about being locked up. I only woke up because my father came into my room, because I was screaming terribly. Normally I never know that I'm screaming slash sleepwalking in my sleep, but this time I remembered it. Maybe it's not sounding as terrifying as most stories here, but it did fell for me. A while back I was building a big capacitor bank for a high voltage power supply and forgot to engage the safety interlocks, which automatically discharged the bank, before making an adjustment. I touched a live lead and there was a bang and a flash of light, and I felt this enormous jolt of muscle contraction going up my arm into my chest, I felt like the muscles were contracting so hard they were physically tearing, and I'm almost sure I heard my heartbeat stop for a second or so. I lost all muscle control and fell on the ground unable to call for help and stayed there for about 3 minutes while my nerves and muscles reset. When I got up I inspected the room, the whole workbench was trashed and it smelled like burnt steak, looking at my hand there was a small spot charred completely black, thankfully it healed. But the awful terror of lying on a concrete floor for what seems like eternity, semi-conscious and unable to move. Easily the worst moment of my life. An ex-friend of mine had some sort of a psychotic break. I've told part of this story before on Reddit, he thought that us and all of our friends were the reincarnations of Greek gods and goddesses. He thought that we needed to save the world. He raped me, and then forced me into his car. I was frozen. I couldn't do anything except keep repeating no, and stop, and don't, and help. I couldn't move, I was so terrified. While in his car, he went barreling down a shortcut road that's legally only for buses and emergency vehicles at 100 miles per hour. He drove an older Camry, and it was shaking. He kept yelling about how easy it would be to kill us and how he was going to use music to kill the world, that it needed to be reborn. Finally, the road ended, and he swerved us off onto a main road and made me get out of the car. He said that if I didn't want to help him save the world, I'd suffer. I ran almost four miles back to my dorm and ended up with hypothermia. He was charged for sexually harassing two other people later that night. I never pressed charges because I was too scared. When I was about 11 me, my older brother and my friend were playing a game whereas me and my friend had to run past a rope swing that my bro was swinging from side to side at the top of a fairly small overhang slash slope thingy in the woods near where I live. On my turn I ran and found that the swing had wrapped itself round my neck but by the time I had noticed this I had already run off the bank. As I swung through the air by my neck I decided I would grab the swing part and try and keep myself up, needless to say this was a bad idea as, at the time I was ranked at 100 something in my age group for swimming butterfly and therefore was light enough and strong enough that I could hold myself up. So, as I grabbed the swing I felt the rope tighten around my neck and found myself unable to breathe. Then I blacked out and by the time I woke up I was on the ground alive and unhurt apart from rope burns around my neck that lasted for a couple of months but the terror I felt as I found myself unable to breathe and blacked out still plays on my mind today, I honestly thought I was going to die and that moment truly made me value every moment I have now. About two months ago, my whole family went on vacation. We live in different states, and all met at a cabin in the Smoky Mountains. My wife, twin daughters, and I got there around the same time as my brother and his wife and son. We all unload our stuff and chill out while we wait for everyone else to get there. I start to get dinner ready while the kids are playing. Right above the kitchen area is a loft with a balcony overlooking the living room. I turn around and see my two-year-old daughter fall from the balcony, about 10 feet, head first onto a glass-covered end table. 
I run and catch her before she falls from the table to the ground. She is unconscious and limp. She is making a gargling noise. She had no expression on her face and just looked lifeless. I thought I was watching her die. Thanks for watching. Please comment, like, share and subscribe. The Internet Surfer on YouTube for more horror and scary stories.